Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you are new here. Hi Hello-y, my name is Loey, and today we are back for a much needed deep dive into the world of Glitch in the Matrix TikToks. These videos are some of you guys' favorites to watch, they're some of my favorites to make. If you're unfamiliar with the idea of a Glitch in the Matrix, basically it's the concept that we live in a simulation and when reality glitches or doesn't act like it's supposed to, that's when it's a glitch in the matrix. I don't know how much I buy into the idea that we really live in a simulation. I like to joke about it sometimes, but I do think these videos are super, super interesting. I think that there are things we just can't explain, and that's why I love to go through these videos with all of you. Before we get into it, today's video is sponsored by me. More specifically, it is sponsored by my first ever merch drop. In 11 years on YouTube, I've never made merch. Isn't that crazy? So I came out with a really limited edition collection. I'm currently wearing a piece right now that says Live Laugh Louie Lane. I have this in t-shirts, hoodies, tote bags. If the Live Laugh Louie Lane stuff isn't up your alley, we also have the Sorry I Ghosted design featuring our little channel mascot, Cupcake. In case you guys didn't know, Cupcake is that cute little ghost icon you get next to your name when you become a member of the channel. It's only available until next Wednesday, which is February 28th at 12 p.m. PST. It's a very limited edition run. It's pre-order, so we didn't sell out on any sizes or anything like that, and it's my first ever merch drop, so I didn't wanna, I don't know, like get too little and not have enough. And I'm really glad because you guys have been so supportive with the drop. I cannot believe how many of you have already ordered your pieces. And I just wanted to let you guys over here on YouTube know that the merch is out until next week. It will be gone permanently after that, so if you like these designs, grab them now, but maybe I'll release more stuff in the future. We'll see. It's available at merchlabs.com slash Lane again until February 28th. Thank you guys very, very much for your support. Thank me for sponsoring this video. And now let's get into the TikToks. We're starting off strong today with a video from Brittany Beware. I have a couple of really heavy hitters in this video, some really, really creepy glitches in the matrix. But this video in particular probably is the reason I decided to film another episode of this. This creator, Brittany, is several months pregnant and her husband leaves her work fairly early in the morning while she rests in bed and reads a pregnancy book. The day that she filmed this was a little bit different, however, from all the others. Because after she had heard her husband leave the house, she then heard him calling her name. I'm just laying there reading my book like 20 minutes after I heard that he left, my pit bull starts going crazy, barking her head off, which she never usually barks. Sometimes she'll get scared if she's asleep on the couch, which she was, and bark like one time, but she just kept barking like over and over and over. And then I heard my fiance's voice yell, hey Brit, and then what sounded like, I need you to come out here, but I couldn't hear like that part. I could just hear his voice yell, Hey, Brit. I run to the door and I see that there's like an old lady standing at the end of our like walkway on the sidewalk with her dog. But she's like not walking, she's just standing there like she's waiting. So I don't have any pants on. So I run back to our bedroom, I put pants on. She has like, I, it looked like she had like headphones on, but she was wearing like a nightgown and like a fur like a full like fur scarf and then she had like her little dog with her not on a leash like a little yorkie dog she was just standing and she was like talking i guess so i guess i just like assumed she was like talking on the phone or something run out there slam the door she doesn't even react to me coming out there she just keeps going on about her business and she's not far from me she's literally at the end of my sidewalk hold on you can see like sidewalk and she was like right at the end. So I stand there for a minute thinking that she's gonna like talk to me. Maybe she knocked on the door and the camera didn't go off or something. But it was weird that the camera didn't go off at all because usually it goes off if cars drive by on the street when my fiance is not home because he parks his car in the front of the house. So when he's not parked there, it will go off for like cars that are driving sometimes. And then I was like, you know what, the camera probably went off when I went outside, and it did. And so I'm gonna put that picture there. And guess what? There's no lady there. Exhibit A. Now I recapped the beginning of that TikTok for you guys. 
but the entire comment section was flooded with people saying, girl, you let that woman into your home and you can see her sitting behind you in the beginning of this video. Okay, I have to take a video of this because I'm freaking out a little bit of something that just happened. So, okay, I have to take a video of this because I'm freaking out a little bit of something that just happened. There is definitely something behind her in that video. I don't know if it's something that was like on her couch that just looked like a person, but it literally looks like somebody is sitting behind her. I'll put a screenshot up here, like folding their arms and staring at her over her shoulder. I think it's really weird that she didn't hear a woman calling out for her. She didn't hear an unfamiliar voice. She heard her husband. She heard her husband outside the home calling for her and then saying something she couldn't really understand. She comes outside, there's a strange woman outside that doesn't show up on the security cameras. And then in the background of this TikTok, you can see what looks like a person sitting there. I almost put this in just like a normal paranormal TikTok video, but I truly think this was a glitch in the matrix. Like the camera not seeing her, her husband like suddenly being home again, even though he had left for work. What do you guys think happened there? Was it a mimic? Was it something else? Has it traveled into her home? I don't know. I'm, I'm really interested to hear what you guys think of this one because I just hope she's okay <laughs> at the end of the day. Like this is a pregnant lady who has a whole life to live and she doesn't need to be dealing with any like universal glitches right now. The next video is something that's not a glitch in the matrix, but seems like it should be. It comes from the TikTok user graces underscore adventures and it's captioned the worst thing you'll see in Bali, hands down. Uh, if you've been looking for a reason to not come to Bali, this is it. This is the worst thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm not exaggerating. All of those spiders are 100, oh, 100 real, 100 creepy crawly. Can you imagine walking out of your house tomorrow and just seeing spiders on spiders on spiders on spiders right outside your home to the point where you could not walk through them? It's truly terrifying. And while it probably wouldn't keep me from traveling to Bali. I will be looking to see when the worst season is for the spiders and avoiding that at all costs. The next one is a bit of a compilation and it comes from the TikTok user Haunted TikToker. I'm not sure for the original source for any of these videos. If you guys know, please let me know down below so I can update the description box with the appropriate credit. The first one takes place at what I think is Disneyland and it says something is wrong with the sky. What is your guess? And in it, you can see that the sky literally looks like it has been cut in half. There's like a cool spiral cloud that is perfectly cut in half in the middle of the sky. There are other places where this happens too, like perfectly straight lines, almost like somebody copy and pasted different parts of the sky. In the next one, and this one is pretty weird, I'm not really sure what this is. It almost looks like there's like a spotlight that I'm sure is just the sun or the moon <laughs> peeking out through the clouds. But when the person zooms in, there are like these specks in the sky that you see for just a minute. And when they zoom in, it more so looks like a car headlight. I don't know how to explain it, but it doesn't look like the sun or the moon normally does peeking through the clouds. The last one is crazy. A bunch of ravens or crows just descend from the sky as if they were literally like tossed down by a gigantic hand and then some of them get up and immediately fly away. Some kind of stay there for a minute, like they're stunned from their fall. All of these surely have a natural explanation to them. Nature is crazy. I don't pretend to understand any of it, but it is pretty creepy. I will say that the sky glitching is like a pretty creepy glitch in the matrix because it truly starts to feel like we're in just a big bubble with a sky being projected. And there's there's a TikTok we're gonna talk about later, by the way, that's gonna kinda come around to that. More on that later. But 
These were pretty creepy all on their own. Oh my God, this one is so weird. Okay, it comes from the user Alexa Sid, and it's captioned, why am I about to cry over this robot? There's a robot, I think at like some kind of art installation that's supposed to just be constantly like, raking the sand in circles. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? I've seen those before, but this one for some reason stopped what it was doing and wrote out the sentence, I wish to express my creativity. Then that little rake thing pulls back, almost like it's like looking at the poster and it starts just raking the sand in a circle again. When it comes to that particular art piece, I'm sure that was just something that was programmed in by whoever created the little robot. But it's funny because even though the robot is like not alive, it's not sentient as far as we know, it still makes you feel something. It reminded me a lot of that one art piece. You know the oil spill one? What is it called? Okay, I just found a TikTok of it from Sock Syrup. It's called Can't Help Myself. It began in 2016 cleaning up this like reddish brown liquid that a lot of people thought was its own oil, but the machine is actually electric. It wasn't like its own oil spill. It did run on hydraulic fluid. And as you'll see in this TikTok, eventually that would run out in the robot arm and it would stop working. Working, but it had these sensors so that when the fluid got to a certain point, the robo arm would immediately start like pulling it back in. And it was really like kind of scary to see the deterioration of the room and the robot over the years doing the same thing over and over again. I don't know, it kind of gives me like a similar feeling to this one. There's something very dystopian about robots that we use as art breaking or giving us some kind of human feelings in any way. And this is why I always say thank you to like Alexa and ChatGPT because listen, if the AI takes over, I am not getting caught in the mix, okay? They're gonna remember I was one of the good ones. That's what I tell myself anyway. As a bit of a palate cleanser, allow me to introduce to you the TikTok account Hold space for my tribe. This account has been going viral on TikTok for its very, how do I say, um, out their videos. They're really surreal. Um, they feel a little like uncanny valley. And I came across the following video in the middle of the night one Thursday. It's Think of Me Thursday. Are you thinking of me? Think of me. Think of me. Is it AI? Is it a person? Is it a sentient TikTok account with a mind of their own? I really can't tell you, but I do know that now every single Thursday I check in for Think of Me Thursday. So it's had the intended effect. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of them. It's literally Wednesday night and I'm thinking of them in preparation for Thursday. Anyway, moving on, we then have an incredible video from an incredible username, poop underscore wagon on TikTok. Now our faithful hero, Poop Wagon, lives in the Appalachian Mountains. And y'all know, I have a lot to say about the hauntings up in the Appalachian Mountains. I think a lot of really weird things, a lot of strange phenomena occurs in the Appalachian Mountains, both paranormal and just like generally kind of glitch in the matrixy. It seems like people appear and disappear, that you'll see creatures and entities that just don't exist in our reality. There's a woman who's currently experiencing a cat man that is stalking her. I'm gonna be talking about that in my next paranormal TikTok video. But in a six minute vlog as he walks through the woods, this creator kind of tells you what to look out for, what not to look out for if you're hiking through the Appalachian Mountains and you're not really sure if you're supposed to be somewhere. Somehow, this inadvertently landed him somewhere he probably never should have been. When you're hiking in Appalachia, the second worst thing you can do is not know when you've shown up uninvited. And the worst thing you can do is turn down their invitation and leave. And if you don't know who they are, then this video probably isn't for you. Always stay on the deer trails. The snow's covered them a little bit, but the deer know where they're invited and they're not. You can see here there's a block in the path and the deer don't cross it. You're okay to cross anything that the deer do cross. Just don't cross anything that you don't. Kind of hard to tell. This is a perfectly square pit in the ground. I'm not going to poke around in there. Also some kind of platform. 
This whole thing is a foundation of a building of some sort. Make sure every time you stop and look at something, you take a second to be silent and listen very quietly or else you might miss the next instructions. Now it's around this point in the TikTok where he hears a really weird noise off in the distance. I'm gonna play it for you now. I had to turn my volume all the way up to hear it. It's really faint, could just be an animal, but it was weird. And that's when things started to get strange around him. It's been going on for quite a while now and at this point they've mostly led me off. What the f was that? I was gonna say they led me off the deer trail. That interrupted me. I think at this point it would be very uncouth to try to reject their continued invitation. Um, I think they're leading me out so quickly and not on the trails for a reason. Because whatever that noise was, was unsettling. I think I see something up here. Another pit. Watch out for stuff like that. Just holes. Like, just don't be careful. I don't feel like I'm supposed to be here, but they're they're rushing me this way for a reason, I think. Like these structures are getting weird. Like repeating patterns like this. I don't, I'm not gonna stick around to figure out what that is. Right as I walked up to this, the wind just blew snow all over me. So I don't think that is from the holy f <laughs> I did not <laughs> see this behind me, like unironically. I have never seen anything like this in my life. I don't think I'm supposed to be here. This is... <laughs> I actually didn't see this behind me. Eventually, he would happen upon like an impossible structure in the woods. Something that very clearly looks man-made, and yet he has no idea what it could be. They could be graves, but it almost looks like there's faces in the stone, which could be from the snow? Anyway, he sees more really bizarre stone structures. It literally feels like he's walking through a snowy section of the back rooms and things are just automatically generating in front of him. All right. Yeah, see, deer don't walk this, man. It's the rule you don't break. This is my... I don't know what the f that was. <laughs> Dude, I don't know what the f is. Parallel concrete slabs. And, uh, just like that, we're out. I uh, didn't get that last part very well because I felt rushed. I don't know if this is the kind of place I'm supposed to come back to. Maybe not. At the very end of the video, he spots a raven circling his car, waiting for him to come back. And it takes off as soon as he arrives. His entire walk felt like a fever dream, man. It was really like he was warning us of all the things not to do, and yet somehow still inadvertently landed himself in an area he wasn't supposed to go to, wasn't supposed to go to. And what he saw is just so strange. It doesn't make any sense to me. If you know what that could be, let me know down below. But the entire video just gave me a really like uncanny valley feeling. It felt like I wasn't supposed to be watching any of it. And like the simulation was glitching all around him, taking him exactly where he wasn't supposed to go. The next video comes from Two Swag Productions and is captioned, I was walking through this neighborhood when I started to notice something was off. The entire neighborhood is empty and the poster says there were no cars or people anywhere to be seen. And you can see it's, it's pretty empty. I decided to take a closer look at one of the houses and notice something strange. It was boarded up. This is not just a street where everybody's out for lunch or something like that. This is completely abandoned. The poster says, I kept walking for miles until I reached this fence. There were even more houses behind the fence. These were different though. I got to the other side and couldn't believe what I saw. The poster shows here that it's like the same layout as the other neighborhood, but in their own words, much more decayed. 
They go on to say why were they trying to hide this and give some shots of the inside of homes. It was at this point that they started to notice footprints and thought it was probably a good idea to leave. Now I looked in the comments to see if anybody knew roughly where this was or if anyone knew what was going on and most of the comments said, in what world were you just casually taking a stroll through Gary, Indiana? Well, there is still a population of people in Gary, Indiana. It's estimated that about one third of the like buildings and areas in this town have effectively been abandoned. And that equates to over 13,000 abandoned buildings and structures. It's kind of like the holy grail of urban exploration for Midwesterners or just anybody who is really interested in ghost towns and urban exploring. While there are some really fascinating things that you can find in Gary, things like an entirely abandoned library with the books still in it, or apartment complexes that were built in like the 1920s and haven't been lived in for 40 plus years, it's also a pretty dangerous place to go urban exploring for a multitude of reasons. For that reason, I'm glad this poster was okay, and I'm also glad that this wasn't a case of an entire town just up and getting abducted by aliens or something like that, getting yeeted out of the matrix. Still, it was a creepy video and a creepy story behind the town. I'm really interested actually to hear if any of you are like from Indiana, if you know of Gary, Indiana, if you've been there before, let me know. I'm curious what it's like. I wasn't really sure whether to include the next video or not, but I think it's really, really interesting and kind of brought up some terrifying conspiracies I never really heard or thought of before, and it all starts off with a Lana Del Rey concert. The video I'm referencing specifically comes from the user Grace Mitzgerlich. I really hope I'm saying that correctly. I'm so sorry if I butchered it. On TikTok, who is an incredible creator with like 2 million followers who talks about horror and conspiracy theories. I really, really like their work. And I stumbled across this video in which she talked about the fact that people were left absolutely terrified after a Lana Del Rey concert earlier this year. So this creator, Epic Paranormal, just made a video about how he went to a Lana Del Rey concert and the vibes were really off. It wasn't only like the spooky vibe going on on stage, but the fans in the crowd were doing really abnormal things. Like there was this one fan that was like screaming the entire concert, begging Lana Del Rey to unalive him. Like it was not normal crowd fan behavior. People were acting very strangely during this concert. Like the actual crowd was just being a little much. And listen, listen, I shrieked my head off at the Taylor Swift Eras tour, okay? If I see Lana this year at Coachella, I'll be screaming my head off for her too. I'll probably say some really weird stuff. But this felt a little bit different. Like the crowd just had a weird energy. The entire show had a weird energy. But the weirdest thing was that apparently when people tried to take photos from the concert, photos of Lana, photos of the dancers, this is what happened to their footage. He said he kept trying to take pictures and every time he did, his phone would distort the faces. Like what is going on? And then how do you tell me that this is Lana Del Rey? Like that, that does not look like, that looks like a demon. Like she looks like a man in a mask and like a coat and like, ugh. Now the faces look really distorted. They almost look like the people are wearing masks on their faces and like they aren't human at all. A lot of people believe, and I also believe, that there is a rational explanation for this. I've never seen anything quite like it, but the zoom on our cameras probably distorted those faces in some way. There's also loud music playing and it's possible that there were just like vibrations and things going on that distorted the photos somehow. I don't really know, but I'm sure there's a reason for it. What I thought was really fascinating though, and I can't find the comment that I originally saw was the idea that research and experiments done by CERN or the European Council for Nuclear Research has supposedly somehow messed up reality, messed up our timelines, and now people are seeing demons in our reality 
that we weren't able to see before. That's stretching a little far for me for a Lana Del Rey concert, but there was actually a comment that I saw on a different TikTok we're gonna talk about where a man named Omar Rodriguez said, we're at a point where we're bleeding into different dimensions. The CERN experiments have ruined time and space badly. Demons are everywhere but now they're visible. I think this is probably a mishap of technology. I don't think Lana Del Rey is a demon in a mask, but what do you guys think? The next TikTok comes from Real Horror Talk, and again, I'm unsure of the original source, but they have translated some of this dialogue into English for us, which is super helpful for people like me who don't speak Spanish. There's a video going viral in Mexico of this little play vanity, and supposedly the story goes that a neighbor gave this toy to a family that had a little kid. Everything seemed fine until the toy started asking kind of strangely specific and personal questions. What the parents thought was even weirder was that when it would talk to the toy, the toy seemed to give very, very specific feedback, like alarmingly specific, like it recognized a lot of what they were saying. Now, they put it in the back barn and viewers begged them to go back and look at it again, to talk to it again. So, the poster went back and had another conversation with this toy. Solo pude encontrar estas piezas y pues sí, le puse unas baterías que tenía aquí en la casa. Como ven, son nuevas. La neta, no creo que prenda, pero bueno, vamos a, a calarle. Ahorita así tengo miedo. Hola. Hola, encantado de conocerte. Gracias, amigo. Me da gusto. <risa> Eres muy divertido. ¿Tienes una fiesta? Mm, no, no tengo fiesta. ¿Tú tienes? No sé. Cuando me levanté, te vi a ti. Once again, it was saying like weirdly specific stuff. Like it really seemed to know what this person was saying and responded to it in kind. Technology has gotten really advanced. I don't think it's that out there for a children's toy to even recognize certain words or phrases, but I think where this gets concerning is number one, that the toy had started asking really personal questions to the little girl who was originally playing with it. Things like, what is a secret you've never told anyone? as well as the fact that some other people who are familiar with this toy say that it doesn't talk, it just lights up, like there shouldn't be any kind of voice coming out of it. I don't know about this one, but that thing gives me the creeps and I'm glad it's no longer in that family's home. This next TikTok is a freaking doozy and it comes from the user It's Anna Gonslevs. Again, hopefully I'm saying that correctly. But my God, this girl, I don't know if she had a lucid dream, not even a lucid dream. She didn't really know she was dreaming or if she just fully hopped timelines for a second. But what she experienced is one of the craziest, scariest things I've ever heard of. And I, I fully believe it happened to her. Like the way she tells this story, everything she puts into it, I completely believe this story is 100% true. This poster is married to the love of her life and has a sweet Rottweiler puppy. That is her life. Those are her babies, you know? And one day she wakes up in a bed that is not hers next to a man she doesn't know with her puppy nowhere in sight. I wake up and I'm like, everything just like feels different the environment feels different i don't feel my dogs i'm like my doberman usually sleeps on my legs i don't feel her and i'm like oh she's probably in the living room like whatever i look over to my side i look over to the other side and i'm like this is not 
this is not my room. If there was any ex that I could lay next to, it would not be this one. And I can promise you that he feels the same. It, it's mutual, okay? So I'm laying next to this ex and I go to his head. I go, what the f*** am I doing here? And he looks at me and goes, what do you mean what are you doing here? I go, where... Where is my husband? Where are my dogs? Why are you in? Why, where am I? Why am I here? And he's like, get the f out of here. Rolls over and goes back to bed. So the dream, I'm like in the bathroom. I'm looking at myself in the mirror and I'm like, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? And I like go to my phone to call my husband, but there's his numbers on in my phone. And in the dream, I can't remember it. Chaos. So I get dressed and he was like, he comes into the bathroom, the ex, and I'm like, and he's like, well, I, I don't know what the fuck is going on with you, but like, I hope you have a good day. I'll see you when I get out of work. Anna is freaked the heck out at this point, okay? She's like, this is not my life. This is not my home. I, I You're my ex. Like, where am I right now? And she ends up hiring a private investigator to help her track down her husband. This is how long this dream is going at this point. I mean, it's been like more than a day. This private investigator comes back to her and says, are you sure you're married to this man? I really don't think you're going to like what I have to tell you. Like, are you positive this is your husband? To which Anna is like, yes, that's my husband. Like, please just give me his information. I have to talk to him. That's when the private investigator gives her the address and she gets in her car and drives to her husband's home. And what she finds completely floors her. And a man answers the door. A big, muscular man opens the door and it's not my muscular husband. And I said, hi, I'm here for, is Jeff here? And he goes, yeah, why? I go, cause he's my husband. And he goes, uh, honey, no, he's not. I can promise you he's not your husband. He looks me up and down and I'm like, why is everyone saying that? He goes, because I'm his husband. My <laughs> I said, what? So then my husband comes to the door and he goes, honey, are you okay? Are you lost? My 200 plus muscular boxing serial killer drug lord looking husband is wearing a shirt with flowers on it, fancy shoes, and a haircut to the side. My husband has a bald fade and a fresh lineup every week, okay? My husband in my dream had a little boop. And I'm like, you're married to me. He goes, honey, no, I'm, mm. he goes, you're beautiful, but you're not, you know, my type. And I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm like, it's me. You're my, you're my husband. And he goes, oh, honey, come in. And I'm sitting at a table with my husband that's married to a man. I said, wake me up now. When he goes, um, honey, I think you need a drink. Why did I sit and break bread with my husband and his husband? I woke up in tears and I looked at him and he's snoring. He's, he fell asleep with his glasses on, just looking like a dad. And I gave him a kiss on the lips and told him that I loved him and he was half asleep and wanted to punch me in the face, but I don't care. And I spooned my Doberman so hard because I just think I can't take the <laughs> anymore. You know what I mean? Like I need to chill the f out. She had met her husband's husband in this reality. It's literally like she transported into an alternate universe where she never met her husband. She stayed with her ex and he was also married to someone else. He had a husband of his own. It's just, it's so crazy. It really does feel not like a dream, but like a timeline hop. And I'm sure she was so relieved to wake up in her own bed with her real man and her baby puppy. But that would scare the absolute crap out of me. It really reminded me of that one lady that we talked about in one of our Glitch in the Matrix videos where she had that like 40 year long dream where she literally like gave birth to her son, raised him until he was a man, watched him grow old with his family, and then woke up in her bed, ready to go to college. I think stuff like that is so fascinating, but it must really throw you for a loop when you come to like 
which reality is the real one. Next up is a story from the TikToker Rumor Dump who responded to a prompt, what is a coincidence that you think about a lot? This poster has a horror story straight out of Stephen King's Pet Cemetery. I'm gonna try to summarize it for you as best I can. I recently lost my dog Riley as well. He was 14, we had a whole decade together, and it's so hard to lose a pet. I truly think it's terrible under any circumstance, no matter how long you prepare for it, no matter how much you know it's coming, whether it's an accident or old age, like happens to the best of us, it's always traumatizing. And this poster lost her baby puppy and got a call one day from somebody saying, hey, I found your dog on the side of the road. He's not with us anymore. I found your number and your name on his collar. I'm giving you a call. I'm really sorry. Goodbye. They hang up. She goes to get her dog, buries him, goes through an entire grieving process. It's hit her dog. It's his collar. And this gives me chills. But three months after this experience, she gets a call from animal control. Cut to three months later. Hi, we have your dog, Murray. This is animal control. Would you like to come get him? Mm. But you don't because he's dead. So then they describe my dog. You want to come get him or what? Yes. So it's nighttime and I am meeting a stranger with a van in a parking lot. And this dog will not come from out of the shadows. And they're like, you're going to take him or what? This dog does not want to come with me and I can't see it. So they're like, come to animal control tomorrow. So me and a car full of friends go to animal control, which is in the middle of the boonies and animal control is a hut with three cages, one of which has a rooster. So me and my friends are looking at this dog. It is the same kind of dog, but it's not my dog. Now she explains at the end of this video that animal control said to her that sometimes people will dig up people's dogs to get their collars and and do some kind of like data thing, but I, I don't really know if that's a thing. I don't know what this was. The poster says that it happened like 15 years ago and I still am just like, was it paranormal? Like, oh, it makes my heart race. Like. Was it these people trying to pull something over on her, like get money from her somehow? Like, was it a scam? What happened here? Who did we bury? Was that my dog at the animal shelter? And I just walked away from him after he found me again. And if we did bury my dog, where did the collar come from? How did it end up on this dog? There's no way that that's a thing. All I know is that I hope her dog rests in peace and I hope she's okay. I cannot imagine how that must have stuck with her to like still tell that story 15 years later. And it is every bit as creepy, I'm sure, as the first minute she experienced it. Next up, we're gonna talk about jinns for a minute. Are you familiar with what a jinn is? Jinns come from Islamic folklore, but essentially seem to be kind of like what you and I would think of as genies in like Western countries. They roughly resemble humans, but they can also also take different shapes and the biggest thing about them is that we can't see them with our own eyes. However, this video from Hamid underscore 12 showcases what is referred to as a real jinn. What you see in front of you is a real jinn. Now when I first saw this video, I was horrified. The video has almost 14 million views and people can genuinely not believe what they are seeing. Now you're probably thinking, I swear humans can't see jinns. Well, you're correct because no humans can see jinns in their true form. But you can see a jinn that appears in a different form. Just like Pookie over here. Now this got me thinking again about what I said about CERN earlier and how some people truly believe that something in our universe has gotten wonky and now we can see things like demons that we couldn't see before. However, hate to break it to you all, hate to break it to this original poster, that is not a jinn, it's actually just a Snapchat filter, apparently. Uh, it's called Zombie Child, um, which I think is really funny. It looks really real, to be fair. I totally would have been convinced by this video, too. However, then I got curious because I'm not too familiar with gins. Um, not really anyways, and I didn't know you can't really see them or anything, and I thought, well, are there other videos of supposed gins on camera? And I found this one from Lil Seiya of a real gin caught on camera. And I'm not so sure about that, but 
whatever this is, is really weird. Literally no idea at all what that thing was saying, but it looked like a plastic human. Like it looked like a human, but with like plastic over its entire being and like it was wearing a mask. This was probably some sort of hoax or internet horror story or I really don't know and I don't know what this person is saying in this video but I thought it was interesting to include nonetheless. Are you familiar with gins? Do you know anything about them? Have you ever seen one? I feel like no because supposedly they're invisible but now I'm really curious. I keep talking to you about this CERN comment, right? And it comes from the following video from Tom Kendall 859 Now listen, this gave me goosebumps the first time I listened to it. This man seems so freaked out by what he saw. And what he saw sounds alarmingly like a grown-up version of black-eyed children. I'm walking down the street, walking back from the store. There's this guy probably about 15 feet behind me. And you know how you can tell someone's walking behind you? I look back, and he's just looking at me. He stops when I stop. So I walk forward a little bit. You know, I keep walking like that. And I say, f***, it, man. I turn around, I go, what? What's the problem? I swear to God, on my mother's grave, this guy's eyes was jet black. Jet black. Just sit there smiling. Smiling like that, man. Turn around, I ran. I come home, I'm sitting out there where my street is. Like that, that corner right there, but I stopped saying that mother was standing right in there, dude. Come in here, get my look out again, he's gone. That dude was not human. He seems really shaken up in this video. I completely believe that he saw whatever it is that he says he saw, but this was the video where somebody commented about those CERN experiments and how apparently, now we can see things we couldn't see before. It makes you wonder if every encounter you've ever had has been with who you think it is. This next one comes from Rome the Daddy and is captioned, if my daughter is asleep in bed, who is this? And you see that his daughter is asleep in her bed on the baby monitor and yet she's right in front of him, like watching TV. This is probably some kind of glitch with the nanny cam or whatever, but I cannot even imagine sitting with my child, just watching TV, hanging out, getting a notification from the baby monitor, looking down and seeing that they just woke up from a nap. Like, oh, that's so creepy. The next video is from Bism Manic, and they have one of the weirdest glitches I've ever heard of that all surrounds an Eggo waffle. So the weirdest thing just happened. Um, I'm making breakfast for my son. I put a waffle in the toaster. And my wife watched me take the waffle out of the bag, put it in the toaster, push the thing down. I go upstairs to go to the bathroom and I get a text from her a couple minutes later saying, where's the waffle? Uh, it's not there. I come back downstairs. Nothing's in the toaster. No one took the waffle. They didn't move at all from their seat where they were sitting. And I've been looking around the house for a waffle that has now disappeared. I have literally looked all over the house and I cannot find the singular waffle. Is this just a glitch in the matrix? Am I having more ghost stuff happen in the house? I don't know. I legit put the waffle in the toaster. I remember doing it, my wife watched me do it. I pushed the thing down, went away, came back, gone. No one moved. Has, there, has anyone lost a waffle like that before? I'm, I'm just so confused. You guys might already know this, but over the summer, I had kind of a similar glitch in the matrix, except it was a chicken burger that I got from Costco that mysteriously had like multiplied. Like I went back into the box of these chicken patties after I had made one and it was fully sealed and there were none missing. And it weirded me out for like weeks. I actually like threw the rest of them away. I was so confused and weirded out. I know what it's like to know that you made something, to know you did something, to know you put the Eggo waffle in the toaster, you started making it, 
it just disappears. Finally, I have a really fascinating video for you from a creator that I'm new to named Breath Daddy. I think that he really explains things so well, I'm like gonna binge his account after I film this because he has some really, really interesting takes on like spiritual stuff, conspiracy theories, all that. And this was one I'd never heard of and might be a little out there for some people, but stick with me through the whole video because it, it it's weird, weird. And it's called the Prison Planet Theory. I went too deep. I went too deep. Have you heard of the Prison Planet Theory? Well, guess who just learned about it? Yeah. I didn't sleep last night. I did not sleep last night. And if you keep watching this, you're probably not going to sleep either. So here I am minding my own business on Reddit when I found Escaping Prison Planet. And for the next three hours, I dove too deep. Here's the gist of it. Essentially, we're all trapped here on Earth. We're all trapped here. And everything we know about, you know, like all the religions that believe in reincarnation, all these different things. Yeah, we keep coming back to this Earth because there are astral beings that are harvesting our energy. And they are trapping us here. Apparently these beings that are controlling us are these reptilian beings that you always hear about. Well, in Jainism and Hinduism, they have Nagas, half human, half serpent. The Aztec Empire talked about a serpent-like god that they called Quetzalcoatl. African shamans talk about the Shitari, and it is a race of reptilian beings. The Hopi Indians in North America had the Shaiti, which translates to snake brothers. Chinese, Japanese, and Korean legends all talk about the Kappa and Gnostic test, which if you don't know about the Gnostics, Gnosis just means knowledge. And basically what the Gnostics believed was after Christ died, you have to have particular knowledge that would save you. Well, the Gnostics, yeah, they believe in archons, which are parasitic entities that feed off of us. According to this theory, that bright light that people explain having when they have a near-death experience is a trick. It's supposed to lure you into following it, coming towards it, and then these beings, these whatever they are, these entities, convince you that you have more to do on Earth, that there's more left to do, that you haven't yet reached your highest good. So you come back to Earth and they feed even more off of your energy. So every major form of religion talks about how we have a soul. Well, we are a soul. We have a body, right? This body is essentially a rental car. And these beings, what they feed off of, what the energy they feed off of is this low vibrational energy. So whether it's stress, whether it's fear, whether it's contention, pain, grief, jealousy, rage, all of it, anxiety, that's what they feed off of. And so they manipulate and they toy with us and they do all these things to create this energy. We're just all here. Life is engineered to create this low vibrational energy. And what happens is when we die, when we go through that light tunnel, we're tricked into thinking, hey, you need to go back to earth. There's more you need to learn or there's karma you need to resolve or, you know, there's a higher purpose that you need to do. And we come back and it's the same thing. I'm a pretty spiritual gal myself. I, I definitely don't think that's all there is to the afterlife. I don't think I would have had half the paranormal experiences I've had if that's really all there was, because in that case, like our energies wouldn't linger. We would just constantly be reincarnating and like coming back to do more things and have more energy for these great almighty beings to feast on or whatever. That sounds so crazy. But I still think it's an interesting theory. And honestly, this creator kind of sold me on it for a second, so I thought I would include it for all of you too. Do you think there's anything to the prison planet theory? Let me know. If my calculations are correct, that was 18 Glitch in the Matrix TikToks from the scary side of TikTok that I wanted to share with all of you. I really hope you enjoyed them. I love deep diving back into Glitch in the Matrix videos, so I really hope you guys enjoyed them as well. If you did, go ahead and give me a thumbs up on this video, and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I appreciate you all so very much who are subscribers of the channel and if you want to take it a step further and become a member of the channel, my channel members get extra members exclusive content like members only videos, updates, they also have an exclusive discount on the merch. Make sure to check out that code if you're going to shop for the merch please, it should be in one of my latest members posts. If you want to join us, there should be a little join button somewhere around the screen, probably next to the subscribe button. We would love to have you. A special thank you to my my VIP loves for their continued and generous support of the channel. I love and appreciate you all very, very much. I love you all very much. Thanks again for watching this one, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!